it's Robin, our silent crafts, and welcome to my studio. It's Wednesday again, so this is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I've been working on this week. You may remember from a previous Whip It Wednesday, I showed you one of these orange and yellow little heart mug rugs that I made. Well, I made two of them, and I wanted to wait until my video for my patrons popped up before I showed you the second one. Now, you already saw the first one because that one was purchased from my shop. This one is in my Etsy shop also, in case anyone's interested. Now, the difference between this one and the other one is really simple. I have white binding on this one, and on the other one, I used an orangey-yellow binding just to see what the difference was. I wanted to show my patrons if you have options. You know, if you chose the white binding, this makes it look a little bit lighter. If you chose the orange binding, it really pulled out those orange fabrics. On this one, I used a white thread to quilt it, and on the other one, I used a light orange to quilt it, even going through the white heart. So it's really nice when you're making two of the same thing. If you use the same exact fabrics, I use the same fabrics. These are half square triangles. I made them two at a time and just mixed and matched them up. You can see all of the straight line quilting and then the fun fabric on the back. This way we were able to sit two of them, one next to the other, and compare them to see what the difference was just by changing one little thing. I guess Miss Mocha doesn't want to hear me talk. I also got to play with some scraps this week. I was working on another Patreon video, and with the leftovers from that, I started to make some fabric postcards. I decided instead of taking the scraps and putting them into scrap containers, putting them back into the polka dot bin, because I used a lot of polka dot fabrics, I would just go ahead and use them immediately. Plus, I was really needing that little scrap infusion of fun. I needed to play a little bit. So I just made simple fabric postcards. Now these I made, of course, using the scraps, and I made them um, using that fusible fleece that I franken-pieced. I have to say, I love using the fusible fleece versus batting. I was able to just put my scraps down, lay them down, tuck some underneath. I had pieces that were this shape here and this shape there. So I put these outer corner pieces on and then I just tucked these other pieces underneath. And when it was all done, I just hit it really well with the iron. And then I think you can see all the straight line stitching I did just to hold everything in place and to hold down all of those seams. Plus, by not using the batting anywhere the fusible fleece touched, it actually holds down a little bit of those fuzzy seams so it doesn't stick out and fuzz everywhere as much as some of my other ones, other fabric postcards have. I like the variety of polka dots. I love the huge polka dots, but they're not always easy to use in projects. So it's nice to have a mixture of some of the smaller ones and some with just a little bit of polka dots. But I had a blast playing with color. Since this piece was all in one, you can see the color combos there that I used. And then this piece was all, <laughs> where's my finger? This piece was all one, so you could see those color combos that I put together. And I just had a lot of fun making the video and then just playing with the scraps. I think all of my projects today that I'm showing you are actually from Patreon videos. And I think that's because I'm ahead on the YouTube ones and you guys have seen everything I've made except for the ones coming forward and we're coming up to live stream time. Before I show you this last project, I want to show you something else that came in the mail recently. If you were with me last year in September, just before that unwelcome Hurricane Ian decided to blow through Florida, you might remember the Wild Grain Bread subscription box. So last September, Wild Grain sent me a box to try out their, their bread subscription box. They have some amazing sourdough bread. But due to the hurricane, we were only able to test out a couple of things before we lost power and we didn't have the ability to cook the bread or to keep it safe so it wouldn't spoil. So when Wild Grain reconnected with me and wanted to do another bread box, I said, yes, please, yes, please, because the kids and I love what's in this box and we wanted to try them all out because we missed a couple of the tasty things inside. So let me show you what a bread box from Wild Grain looks like. It comes in this nice heavy duty box. It has this really thick recyclable paper smushed layer in there. 
Now, oh no, my box is empty. I pulled the bread out already. I'll show you the bread in a second. But it comes with a really great freezer pack. And it also comes with some dry ice. Now they do this really fancy formula with the dry ice. They know exactly how much dry ice to put in based on the distance that the box is going and the temperature on the day and the days it's traveling and the day it's going to end up at your house. So when you open it up, sometimes there's a little bit of dry ice left, but both times I've gotten it, it's been empty, bags with just a little bit of moisture in it. They give you directions on how to handle it. I just took it outside and, and left it on my front porch because you never want to put dry ice into like your toilet or your sink drain or anything like that. That's very dangerous. So now I can recycle this entire box. I'll put the ice pack into my freezer. They give you little tidbits of information here. So last year when mine came, of course, it was in the middle of September in the 100 degree weather. My products, some of them were a little bit defrosted, but they were still cold. So as long as they're still ice box cold, you can go ahead and pop them in the freezer. No problem. No ice crystals, no damage to the quality, the flavor, or the texture of the items. It was great. If it's actually like room temperature, then you just go ahead and contact them and they will take care of it for you. Okay, the box is exciting. Yes, it has little fancy things. It can be recycled, which is a really big plus because a lot of us don't want to have any of that extra foam or things like that to have to deal with. But what's more important is what comes in the box. Before I explain what came in the box, the first link in the description box will take you directly to the Wild Grain website. And I'll also put a link into the pinned comment. When you follow that refer link, you don't even need to have a coupon code. It's going to automatically give you $10 off your first box. And you'll get free croissants in every box that you order after that. So in this month's box, I have the croissants. Now all of these products are actually vegetarian. They come with clean ingredients, unbleached flour, non-GMO, and no artificial colors, which is a really a great plus. Each item that comes in the box has the description of what it is. So this is some fettuccine. It gives you your basic ingredients, it gives you the cooking instructions, and it has nutritional facts, which is really great. So you have just your basic ingredients, and then it goes into more detail down here. But I love the fact that it has the nutrition facts. That way, my son Justin can check the sodium levels, and if he wants to check anything about the sugars and the fats and stuff like that, he can keep a close eye on that. Now, my daughter Miranda, she just loves the homemade pasta. With our last box, she took the homemade pasta to a co-worker's house and they had like an adult stay at home, get together dinner type thing. They had fancy adult beverages, they had the handmade, fresh made pasta, and they took a loaf of bread and turned it into garlic bread. It actually made my daughter want to make her own handmade pasta afterwards and she said mom this one tastes even better and of course it's a lot less work what's great is you can just take the frozen pasta and put it right into a pot of boiling water and cook it you don't have to wait for anything to thaw and the same thing with the breads you don't wait for them to thaw you can just say all of a sudden oh hey let's have some homemade pasta tonight and i'll make some garlic bread using the slow fermented three seed bread you bake this directly from frozen. At first I was a little worried, is it gonna make it kind of soggy or something like that? Is the texture gonna be a little different? No, this bread actually tastes amazing. It has a nice crunch to the outside. The inside is a soft, steamy sourdough bread that I love so much. So you throw this into a preheated oven and it bakes for 18 to 22 minutes. And when you're done, your house smells like the bakery at the store. I love the smell of fresh baked bread. This one comes with cherry pie bites. Our last one had apple pie bites. They look really amazing. This is one of the items that we weren't able to try last time because it went bad with no electricity, no power. A little bit hard to put these into the oven to bake them. This box came with some sourdough rolls. I was thinking that these look really good. You can have these with pasta or with soup or with chili. You can just pop a couple of them in the oven and have them for an afternoon snack. You could put maybe some ham and cheese on it, have a hot ham and cheese sandwich. The regular sourdough bread. Have you ever made sourdough bread? I have never made sourdough bread. Someone sent me sourdough starter, and when I read the directions on what you have to do all the time with it, I said, no thank you, I'm just gonna go to the store and buy the sourdough bread. I buy sourdough bread regularly at the store, but let me tell you, this sourdough bread tastes so much better than what you buy at the store. You're gonna take this directly out of your oven. It's going to be steamy hot. 
and then you're going to have it right then and there for your dinner. But when I buy it at the store, and it might have been baked fresh today, or maybe it was baked fresh yesterday or the day before, I bring it home, it's going to sit on my counter, and it's, you know, bread does things on the counter, right? Or if you don't want to eat it right away, you have to put it in the refrigerator so it doesn't get moldy or go bad at all. And then it's not as great when you have it with your meal. But this way, you're having it right out of the oven. So whatever you're cooking, chances are it's probably going to take that 22 to 25 minutes anyway. So you just go ahead and pop your bread in. And while that's doing its thing, you can go ahead and make the dinner. And then you'll have fresh out of the oven bread that tastes amazing. Plus, as a sourdough, oh my goodness, you have to feed the sourdough starter every day. And then you have to like remove parts of it so that you don't have a whole bunch because it keeps multiplying. So what do you do with the parts that you pull out? I'm only one person. I can't eat that much sourdough product every single day. So a box like this is great for me, and it's also great for a family. What I love about this is it's called a subscription box, so you can get it every month. But if you decide that, oh, we're going to be out on vacation, or it's summertime, we're going to be out at the beach a lot, we're not going to have a lot of bread, you can go ahead and just stop your subscription with no penalty at all. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and pick it back up again. I think this would make a really great gift to send to a family member, maybe someone who has been in the hospital or a new family member, maybe they had a baby in the family, so they can have something like this that even dad, who's a little bit frazzled from running back and forth for the hospital, can go ahead and make something nice for mama when they get home. When I was looking at these croissants, it reminded me of the craze that some people are having with the Costco croissants that they're, they're already pre-made and they come in the little plastic container and stuff. So they take them home and they're slicing them open and putting chicken salad in it. It's supposed to make an amazing chicken salad croissant sandwich. But if you make them directly at home, imagine how fresh and fluffy that'll be. I'm gonna take the slow fermented three seed bread. I'm gonna go ahead and bake that for you guys right now so you can see what it looks like. But afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and make some slow fermented three seed bread pizza, like a French bread pizza where you slice it in half and go ahead and make a pizza out of it. Or you can just make individual slices so you can have like the English muffin pizza. So you just take a little piece of the bread, make an individual pizza on it and put it in the oven. So there's a lot of things you can do with this even if you don't wanna eat it just plain bread. Give me a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and bake this up. This one, once I preheat the oven, it's going to take 18 to 22 minutes and it's going to make a nice, crispy, crunchy sounding bread and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So there it is, fresh out of the oven, so hot that when I touch it, it's gonna burn my fingers, but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like. Bread does do better if you let it rest for a little bit, but come on, it smells so good and tastes so good, we never wanna let it rest. Can you hear it? That crunch, oh yum. Now if you notice, mine got a little bit crispy. I wanted to do a little experiment. In the directions, there's nothing about putting it in a toaster oven. I did a little quick search online and nothing about a toaster oven. Now here in Florida, I try not to put my big oven on just for, you know, fun little loaf of bread for 20 minutes. I would make a whole meal that goes in the oven and then pop the bread in with it. So I wanted to see if my toaster oven could actually bake the bread also. Now my toaster oven isn't just basically a simple old toaster oven. It's quite large. It can do a large pizza, so it does have enough space to put a big round large, I think it's like a 16 inch pizza in it. I can actually cook things in it, so I do like to use my toaster oven a lot in the summer. This bread specifically has honey in it. I should have removed one of the racks and cooked it at a lower rack so that it wasn't so close to the element. Before the entire loaf could bake, it did get a little bit crispy on the outside. So I just wrapped it up in tin foil and let it finish baking at a lower rack. And as you can see, it comes out perfectly fine. I know not all of us have an oven or not all of us like to put an oven on, especially during the summer. So I thought it would be a nice thing to experiment. But check out can you see all that ooey goodness in there? All of that nice, I guess it's the gluten that's causing it to break apart. It has all of these little bits of look nooks and crannies and everything like that. You could slice this and put a whole bunch of cold meat on it and make like a hoagie, a sub, a grinder, whatever you guys might call them. 
and then slice it up for the family. My grandmother loved doing that. She loved getting long pieces of bread, slicing it in half, putting roasted pepper in there, putting the sun-dried tomatoes and some really good like honey-baked ham, lettuce, condiments, all of that good stuff, and then just slicing it into small sandwiches for us to sit around and just play cards and have a nice sandwich at the end of the day. So your scrappy word for today is going to be bread. Are you a bread person? I'm a bread person. I love bread. I just have to be careful that I don't eat a lot of bread. Just like anything else in life, it's good to just in moderation. But if you're going to have something, have something that tastes really good. And since it's non-GMO, it doesn't have all the bleaching in it, the bleached flour and stuff like that. It's just really good. No dyes or anything like that. And it's really good. And let me tell you, the taste and the smell... It's just amazing. I mean, listen to the crunch. That's delicious. Did I mention I wrapped it up in tin foil when I put it back in the toaster oven so it wouldn't keep burning? Now, some of you might click on that link and you might go over and you may see the price and you may say, oh, that's a lot of money for bread. Remember, this is artisan bread. These breads are coming from bakeries. Everything is handmade. You can actually pause your starter and put it in the freezer. But it's so much easier just to go ahead and order the box. So if you think of it as just bread, then yes, the price is very high. But if you think of it as artisan bread, that you didn't have to go through all that effort and it's got really fresh ingredients in it and it's nice and clean, then I think it's worth the price. And I'm pretty cheap. So remember, the link is down below in the description box right at the top also in the pinned comment so it's really easy to just click on it it'll take you right over to the wild grain website you can look around and see what they've got going on and read up on anything you want to i know several of you ordered a box last time thank you so much i hope you really enjoyed your boxes because what little we ate of our box last time we really enjoyed it and we've actually talked about it since then there's been many conversations my daughter and i had about the bread and about the things that we didn't get to try out so thank you so much for listening to me and for checking out the Wild Grain website. Now let's continue on with the Whip It Wednesday. Doesn't that bread just look so yummy? I love hot, fresh bread out of the oven. I love the way my house smells when I'm baking bread. And what I really love about that Wild Grain box, I don't have to clean up afterwards. There's no flour stuck everywhere. There's no spilt yeast. Nothing got on the floor. I don't have to scrape the counter with the bench scraper or anything like that. And I don't have to clean the bowl that has that sticky dough left in it. No matter how much you scrape it out, there's always something left in there that you have to clean. And then it gets stuck in that little strainer in your sink. I don't have a dishwasher. I am the dishwasher. So then I have to figure out how I'm going to get all of that out without letting that raw dough go down my sink drain. I know. Such complicated life I have. Such hard work I have to deal with. All right. Enough about the bread because I tell you that it's just, it's good bread. It, it's just good bread. Let me show you another project. This is one of the Valentine's Day February projects. I had fun playing with the scraps and the stripes. Look at this, this was a jelly roll scrap that someone had sent me and you can just see the gradation of, of colors. I almost said flavors, the gradation of colors. It looks like maybe it's sitting weird in the light and you get different reflections, but no, it's just one fabric. I love fabrics that are gradiating. They do all of the work for us. Aquas and reds, always been a favorite of mine. And then on the back, I just used a fun red bandana type fabric, but it does have a nice little design to it. A lot of bandanas have these large paisley pieces to it, and this one just has a whole bunch of little ones. So instead of your basic bandana, I think this works really well. I just, I like this fabric a lot. I want a nice, crisp, clean binding, so I just went with white to have that nice contrast. I used a light gray as an inner border. So the hearts, they have a white fabric for their background, but then that Moda grunge type mottled gray, just a nice light color. It just gives it a little bit of like a, not a shine or a sparkle sparkle, but it just gives it a little shine or a little sparkle. 
and changes it up just a little bit. Now I know hearts are a huge part of like February and Valentine's Day, so you could change out your, your mini quilts or make a pillow with these or something like that. But I think hearts can stay up year round. I don't see why we have to take them down just because February and Valentine's Day is over. I think the heart shape would be really cute in a, like look, I did this one in the oranges and yellows, so why couldn't you have some in autumnal colors or make some Christmas hearts? I did, can you see the, can you see the little wiggle squiggle? That's what I did for the quilting. I used white thread through all of them. And sometimes I worry about putting white thread on a project like this, but it really does blend in a lot. It does stand out, okay? You can see the white thread on some of the darker fabrics, but when you're hanging it up and you're looking at it like this, I couldn't see any of the white thread. <laughs> I am standing behind it or sitting behind it though, but yeah, you can't see the white thread from a distance. It really does blend in, so it works out really well. I love the Aqua Heart. It's my favorite. Now this heart was made using like the stitch and flip method, so there were some large pieces down here to make half square triangles. I could have used them somewhere else in the project, put them on the back, make a border, do something with them, or just throw them away, but they were just too cute to throw away. So I'm going to have to find a project to use them in. So how can you throw that away? I mean, you could, and a lot of people do, but the fabric is just, I got really lucky and I found some really pretty fabrics to use. I love this one down here. And you can just have a lot of fun with them. You could put them back together and match them up. You almost have a heart right there. So here's the bottom part of the heart. So you could play with them and put them back together, turn them into a square and a square, make what looks like a diamond, create a fun pinwheel. So I have all of these to play with and I'll put them into my little scrap area over there and I'll put them in their own little Ziploc baggie and when I'm ready to play with them, I'll turn them into something. I think these colors are really fun and bright and they would work great in a tote bag or something. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I really do appreciate it whenever we have someone who wants to sponsor a video or part of a video, send some type of a product for me to show you guys. I really appreciate it when you guys click that link and even if you're not gonna purchase something, just to click the link and go over and show them a little bit of love and to say, hey, you know, we want to see what you guys have and we want to support Robin and we're just going to go check it out. So even if you can't purchase something or you don't want to purchase something, just clicking that link does make a big difference for me and my channel. So I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'm going to see you guys on the live stream. Now remember on the live stream for Friday, what we're going to be working on is the little scrap triangles. So when we trim little bits off like this little triangle here and these little triangles there, I saved a lot of the non-plain white ones into a bin. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple of ideas on what you can do to use them up instead of just either tossing them or letting them sit in a little plastic storage container on your shelf for years. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys on the live stream at 3 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Bye.